All the way back in November of 2023, I posted a video on this very YouTube channel with the title, My Perfect Smartphone. And in this video, what I did is I tried to basically build what for me would be the perfect phone, the screen from this phone, the form factor from this phone. You get the idea, the video did pretty well. And now that we are in the year 2025, a whole bunch of things have changed. So I thought in this time of relatively light news, it might be fun to readdress this question and build my perfect smartphone for 2025. I think it makes the most sense to start off with form factor because there's actually quite a bit of variability with that in the smartphone world in 2025 and it will lay the foundation of the device that I am trying to make. And for form factor, I'm actually going to reach back into the past just a little ways because still in 2025, my form factor of choice would be the original Pixel Fold. Some of you are going to understand this absolutely, and some of you are going to be very, very confused by this. But still, in 2025, every time I pick up this phone, I just think that it's absolutely adorable and kind of perfect, in the sense that you have a cover display that is short enough that I can use it one-handed. I can reach pretty much to the very top of that screen very, very comfortably. There have long been a subset of consumers who have been wanting a miniature flagship phone, like an iPhone mini. But you know what the problem is? With something like an iPhone mini, sometimes you do want a larger screen. But guess what? This thing opens up, and then you have a very large screen. But it's a large screen that is wider than it is tall, which for me is much more useful. You're going to get applications showing their dual panel view straight away. You don't have to rotate it to get into that dual panel view. It's just going to be there. Look at my Pixel Weather application. Same thing. You've got that dual panel layout. Maybe that's not the best app example because it's not doing a whole lot with that layout. But you know what I mean. It's right there. It's actually changing the way that you're using your apps. It's not just the same app but bigger. It's actually going to allow many apps to change their interface to a true tablet interface. And of course, if you're going to do split screen multitasking, you get two windows, two screens that are very, very reasonably sized for me. They're not going to be sort of very narrow, skinny screens like maybe you've seen on Z Fold devices. This does remind me so much of my Surface Duo. And for me, that is more than reason enough to say form factor. It's the original Pixel Fold. If I'm being honest though, the overall hardware of the original Pixel Fold really does not stand up all that well. The hinge doesn't feel that great. It's thick, it's heavy, not the best hardware in the world. So for the overall hardware, I'm going to go with the Oppo Find N5. Give me that Pixel Fold form factor. Give me this kind of thickness. Give me this sort of build quality hinge, just overall hand feel quality of the Oppo Find N5, and I'm going to be very, very happy. So since we're building a device that has two screens, the screens are going to be very, very important. I'm going to kind of mix a couple of things up here. So in terms of actual screen performance, the way that they look, the brightness, I have to go with the Galaxy Z Fold 6. I've shown you guys a couple of times now, the Galaxy Z Fold 6 outside in direct sunlight, absolutely dominating all the other foldables I have. We're talking OnePlus Open, Oppo Find N5, Pixel 9 Pro Fold. These screens are just the best. They are so bright, they look fantastic, but, we have to go back to the Oppo Find N5 a little bit here because the crease that Samsung has is still a little bit bad. When you compare what Oppo has done with their crease, you definitely have to give them the nod and go back in that direction. In terms of speakers, I'll keep things short and sweet. There are two phones that I have that I would go back to. It's either going to be the OnePlus Open or it's going to be the Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra. They are both very loud, very clear, very bassy. I might lean OnePlus Open because it literally has three functional speakers, whereas this only has two. I also appreciate that OnePlus was smart enough to put, I think it's two speakers on top and then one on the bottom. At any rate, you get stereo separation no matter how you're holding the phone, and I absolutely adore that as well. Either way you go, you're going to be quite happy with the speakers. 
In terms of internals, it's kind of hard for me to pick a phone that ticks every box. I'm sure there are plenty of phones out there, but I'm kind of reaching into my own experience phones that I have. You're going to want the Snapdragon 8 Elite, so maybe you could say S25 Ultra. You could kind of say the Find in 5, but it is missing a core, so it is a little bit quote-unquote slower because of that. You're going to want 16 gigs of RAM, so maybe that disqualifies the 25 Ultra. I think that the Find in 5 might have 16 gigs of RAM, if I'm not mistaken. So maybe you lean back in that direction, but that's what I want. The Snapdragon 8 Elite, you're going to want 16 gigabytes of RAM, not because I actually need it. 12 is honestly probably just fine, but we're building the perfect phone, so let's go that direction. UFS 4.0 storage, I think that both of those phones have that, so kind of like a mixture between those two. For battery and charging, we will combine these two. I have an obvious, easy answer. We're back to the Oppo Find N5. 5,600 milliamp hour battery means this thing gets me through a hard day's use, even with the big screen, absolutely fine. And then if I do need to top it off, it charges at 80 watts, which means the battery life is almost irrelevant because if you give me 10 minutes of charging time, I've probably got like five more hours of use back on this device. That is as much of a no-brainer in this category, or in this video, I should say, as any category. Software is another slightly complicated one. You guys know that I have an affinity, a love for Pixel devices and Pixel software. They have so many features that I really, really enjoy. And so I do lean in that direction, but I must admit that it does miss out on a couple of things that I do really miss from other devices. So if we can take the Pixel UI, okay, and the way that Pixels handle multitasking and split screen, where a swipe in on the right side always goes back on the app on the right side, and a swipe in on the left side always goes back on the app on the left-hand side, and then you give me some of the cool stuff like floating windows from maybe the Galaxy Z Fold 6, but then also, can I have the two fingers swipe down to get into multitasking from the OnePlus Open or the Oppo Find N5? Let me combine them in that way. Pixel UI with Samsung's floating windows and Oppo's two fingers swipe down split screening gesture, and I would absolutely be in heaven. And then the last thing I need to touch on is the camera system. And this is actually surprisingly difficult because my instant thought was, I really like Pixel cameras, so I'll just grab the camera system from the Pixel 9 Pro XL. But there actually is something that I miss from or about this system from another device. And it's going to be the mid-range zoom of the S25 Ultra. I like having that 3X there because what ends up happening is, on this device, 1X looks good, 2X looks good, 3X doesn't look that great, 4X looks pretty bad, 5X looks good, but on the S25 Ultra, each step of the way, one's fine, two's fine, three is a new sensor, so three looks good. Four is still fine, five is a new sensor, so it still looks good. You end up having really no downturn in that range, whereas on the Pixel device, you do. So maybe I'd go with the 25 Ultra, but then you have the shutter lag issue, which, take a lot of picture of my dogs, they're always moving, that's the problem. So it's a little bit complicated to pick which one I would go with, and then you have to talk about video, and when it comes to video, it's absolutely going to be the S25 Ultra. If you see B-roll on this channel, it's almost always coming from my S25 Ultra, and there is a reason for that. It just simply handles video the best of any device that I have. I could just say iPhone. I don't have an iPhone. I don't have the way to test that, so I'm sticking with my own personal experience. Since I have to give an answer, though, I think I'm going to go camera system of the Pixel 9 Pro XL with the caveat being video performance of the S25 Ultra. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think that I have built one feature complete badass smartphone that I would absolutely love to use. What I want to hear from you guys and gals down in the comments down below is how you would build your own perfect smartphone. What parts would you swap in and out? Let me know in those comments down below. Subscribe for more content just like this. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.